Hello and welcome everybody to today's webinar, Sublimating Mugs, Small and Large Production. My name is Darcy and I am with the Coastal Pro team here at Coastal Business Supplies. I want to uh, take a moment and, and to just say welcome and thank you for sharing a part of your day with us and um, look forward to sharing with you a wealth of information and um, hopefully answering tons of questions that you guys might have on sublimation mugs um, for both small and large production. So real quick here, um, let me go to the next screen here. Uh, today's presenter is myself, as I said, my name is Darcy, and then we've got Tim Chuck with uh, Epson and Dan Gilstrap uh, with PIX. So we are going to share this web, uh, webinar. I'm going to speak a little bit about some items, and then Tim and, and Dan are going to speak about their, um, their items that they have that will help you be successful in uh, producing drinkware. We do have uh, a little bit of items that we want to go through with the agenda today. We're just going to basically explain uh, what dye sublimation is all about and highlight with you what coated and other drinkwares are, the coating of the drinkware, uh, small and large format printing, uh, how to do production, whether you're using a single mug press or if you're wanting to bump it up to the mid-level or high volume mug production. And then we have some special offers and at the end we are going to be doing some promotions as well. But before we begin, I wanted to do a quick poll with you guys to just find out and see how you guys, um, where you are, your primary you know, reason for attending the, um, today's webinar. So real quick, we're going to have something pop up on your screen. If you guys could just answer a few quick questions with us. And the poll is open. Um, we'd like to just basically see where you are with um, sublimation. Um, mug production. You guys are answering pretty fast here. We've almost got about 60% of um, everyone has already voted. Uh, we're going to keep it open for about 10 more seconds here, see how everyone's doing. So it looks like the majority of you are maybe already doing mug production, but you're looking at increasing your current uh, level of production. And then a nice handful of you are also just kind of completely new to this and you're wanting to learn what, um, how to go about sublimation and, and to, to making drinkware. So that's really helpful information. It helps us answer questions for you guys and, and point out things throughout the webinar. We want to make sure that this is very beneficial for everybody. Uh, if, there is a, if there's something that we don't cover during the webinar, at the end, we will be taking questions. And we want to make sure we get um, everything taken care of and you guys are um, walk away with it with a little bit more knowledge about production of mugs here. So I'm going to jump into it and help uh, out some people who maybe don't even know what dye sublimation is about um, and how to do dye sublimation. So with that, um, some pretty simple steps. This is a pretty easy learning curve uh, when you get into doing decorations on. Um, today we're highlighting drinkware, but it's not just drinkware. Uh, you can use this for going onto a polyester fabric or any other hard surface item that, that has been prepped for dye sublimation ink. So you'll start off um, on your computer with a design, whether it's a clip art design or photography, um, vector or, or um, rasterized image. And from, the, from your computer, once you've got your design in play, you print it out onto using a dye sublimation printer. There are desktop dye sublimation printers, and then there's um, wide format dye sublimation printers, which is what we will be going over today. From that, you print it out onto a transfer paper. Now, this isn't just any type of paper. It is transfer paper that's made to accept dye sublimation ink. It's actually got a coating on there, and it's going to hold on to that dye sublimation um, until it's needed. 
So what's going on in the black image uh, picture here is you've got the ink on the transfer paper. And then this, this says it's going on to a dye sub, uh, onto a polyester fabric. Uh, in today's scenario, we are actually talking about mug production. So instead of a polyester fabric, it's actually a mug that has a polyester coating on it. Once you apply heat and pressure, so in the picture we have a heat press. We'll show you how to do it later on in today's webinar with mugs. But once you apply um, heat and pressure, then the ink on the transfer paper is going to turn into a gas and it's actually going to jump off the paper and move on to oops somebody just told me my poll is still up there so let me stop the poll sorry about that hopefully you guys are seeing the screen now you got it everybody got it yep. okay thank you everybody thanks for letting me know sorry about that that's the great thing about webinars. This is live, so sometimes we have technical errors. Apologize about that, sorry. <laughs> so real quick, I'll go through that a little bit faster here since I uh, don't want to make you listen through it twice. But um, number one is the, um, on the left there, that's the monitor. That's where you're gonna create your designs. And number uh, two on there, that's the printer. Again, that could be a desktop printer or it could be um, a wide format printer like we have on the Epson here. As I was saying about the transfer paper, that's made specially to accept the dye sublimation ink. So what's going on in the screen uh, to the right, the black image is the design was printed on the transfer paper, but when the transfer paper is exposed to heat and pressure, that ink is going to basically jump off the transfer paper and onto the either polyester fabric or the hard surface item that has been coated with a polyester coating. So that's the real quick kind of what's going on with dye sublimation. You do have to have a printer that is made for dye sublimation. You have to work with a paper that accepts dye sublimation ink and of course the dye sublimation ink. Um, we're going to get into this a little bit further on the next slide. So since we're talking about mug production today, this is a question that we hear a lot when we go out to the various trade shows or when people come in um, and, and ask us about mugs. One of these mugs is a mug that we sell here at Coastal. Another mug is one that you could go out to um, just a regular store or Walmart or wherever and get a mug. So they look the same, but they're not. The one that we sell at Coastal has been coated with a polyester coating. Uh, it's kind of a harder polyester coating. You can't see it, you wouldn't know that it's there, but that coating is what accepts the dye sublimation ink. You can try to sublimate onto a non-coated mug, it's not gonna work. You do have to have a, a mug that is prepped for dye sublimation. Uh, there's different grades of how mugs are coated, and so um, we sell um, we do a lot of testing here at Coastal on our mugs uh, when different mugs come in. We do sell uh, quite a few of the 11 and the 15 ounce mugs. Um, there's a wide variety of ones. Before we uh, offer them to you, we do tons of testing in-house to make sure that they accept the, the ink well and um, it, it, it withstands tests as far as dishwasher, um, how long it will, um, how well that image uh, looks the vibrancy of it. So not all mugs are created equal when it comes to uh, dye sublimation and um, these mugs are also considered a blank. Uh, all items that you sublimate onto are considered a blank until you, the decorator, turns them into, you know, your own personalized product. So a Different thing about mugs, when it comes to uh, drinkware and other hard surface items, like I said, these are all have polyester coating. Drinkware items are prepped with an extra hard polyester coating, and it does make it tolerable to dishwasher, and it's safe for the consumable. Uh, most of them are 11 and 15 ounce mugs. An interesting fact I've learned about the 15 ounce mugs, those are mugs that are primarily sold in the United States. Um, 
not so much in other countries. Uh, I guess we really like our coffee here. And then um, there is a wide variety of colors and sizes available as well. Just wanted to give you a few other items beyond the mug. On um, the left here is our 15 ounce and then the one in the middle is our 11 ounce mugs. We do offer other drinkware, um, water bottles, for example. And then here's some other fun items, uh, like the one with the puppy dog at the top. That one has a black handle. The inside of the mug is actually black. Um, we have ones that they look black, but once you put some hot coffee in it, it you're um, it changes and it shows the, the image that you've sublimated onto it. We have ones that are metallic, so just a nice wide variety. I always recommend, you know, going to our website and just searching around and seeing all the different products that are available for doing uh, drinkware. So getting into the small format production of mugs, uh, here are two of our desktop printers, the Virtuoso printers. We have the Virtuoso uh, SG400 and the SG800. What's nice about these printers is uh, they do print eight and a half by 14 and the SG800 does go up to 11 by 17. You can get an ex another tray to even go bigger. But for mug production, it's nice because you can actually um, buy sublimation paper that's cut down to size. So you can just load that paper in there. As you can see up on the uh, top right, we have some image right paper. You can put that paper in there and print your image, um, and then you'll put that on the mug and press it. So it, it's a nice feature to be able to just print and go if you're doing mug production. Uh, it's a pretty handy feature to have to just be able to, to print on your paper and, and tape it onto the, to the mug and go. Definitely want to get in and let you know about uh, the ink cost. That's something people are going to ask about and some of the features of these smaller printers. Uh, with the Sublijet um, or the Virtuoso printers, you'll be using Sublijet uh, HD ink cartridges. So it's nice that this is a great way if you're just getting into mug production and you're wanting to test it out, or if you're doing prototyping, these are good printers to get to to purchase and to work with. Uh, I will tell you, if mug production is something that you are doing in high volume, I would use these types of printers for prototyping or maybe if you're wanting to take it on site to an event and make drinkware right on site as people are needing them, this would be a great way to get started um, with these types of um, mugs. I am gonna hand this uh, part of the uh, webinar over to Tim Chack here. He is with Epson and uh, Tim's gonna talk a little bit more about uh, wide format printing with the Epson 6200 printer. So, Tim, are you there? I am. Well, thank you, Darcy. So far, this is great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, what I'm, I just wanted to introduce a little bit to the topic while we're talking about mug production. Um, certainly, as, as I actually did a great job just kind of leading right into it. Um, as you're starting a business, um, a desktop printer is really nice and compact in size. Uh, but as that starts growing and you want to start becoming more production oriented, where this is something you're looking to produce a couple hundred mugs uh, to thousands of mugs a day. Uh, when we start looking at higher production, this is where some of our products, the Epson dye sublimation solutions, are what we call our Surecolor F series, really come into play. And the big advantages, if I just really sum it up, is um, it really produces a high, you're able to get a high print volume at a very, very low operating cost. Um, those are some of the really big advantages to the system. Um, and obviously the, the other parts of the stuff behind the scene is we do a lot of things in here to make sure that the reliability of that system uh, just keeps working. So what we uh, what we look at is our Shirtcolor F6200. Uh, we have bigger printers in our family too, but um, for mug production, this is probably one of the most popular uh, printers for people doing a lot of promotional products and mugs. It's a fast printer. Uh, you can use it for a lot of different uh, type of applications, not just mugs. Um, and this printer, it goes up to 44 inches wide. And the reason I mention that is sometimes we want to do an all-over t-shirt. You know, it's not the focus we're going to cover today, but you could do a pattern that's in there or you can do other types of applications. So there's a lot of versatility to the printer. But for mug production, you can put in different width rolls. You don't have to put in a 44-inch roll. Um, but we, in a production environment, we usually want to go roll, and the printer has a built-in cutter. Um, and so when we start going roll to sheet, 
um, having a big roll of uh, paper loaded in there is a lot more efficient. You load up one roll of paper and the printer will automatically cut it as needed to whatever size it's going to be. Um, to give you an idea though, for producing mugs, you're generally going to be able to produce over 100 plus mugs an hour uh, with this type of printer. Uh, but it depends on what you want to do for if you want to go really high quality um, or not. Um, and I think I might have uh, jumped over one slide here. Um, sorry about that. Um, yeah, there we go. So one of the things I did want to just highlight on this printer is there is a cutter that is built in here. So anything that's on a roll, it will automatically sheet it. So it's nice that on a um, if you're doing mugs, a lot of times the image is about eight inches in width and about three to three and a half inches tall. Um, depending on the type of paper that you can put in there, you can do mugs where you put multiple sets of mugs in there. Um, with this printer, you can put about four, we call it four up, where you're printing four mugs wide across. And it's nice when you do that, you just simply cut the paper in half on a regular guillotine cutter when you're done. Um, but this does include, the printer does include a full set of ink. So it includes uh, a full liter of cyan, yellow, magenta, and black, um, as well as also a roll paper. It includes all the software needed to get going and color management, all the profiles and pieces to it. Uh, something to just mention, I, I did mention it when I first started, is uh, the cost of production. Uh, with these larger uh, printers, one of the big things you'll notice is the ink price is about 1 20th of the price. So it's about, um, you know, for uh, for every penny of ink that you put in on this printer, on a smaller printer, uh, which is good for, for prototyping and sampling or trying to do it more one-offs, on a smaller printer it may cost you 20 times as much in terms of the ink price. So this is where with a larger printer, you get the speed, you get the lower operating cost. It's really geared for more if you're going to have this in a shop where you're able to produce quite a bit of, of printing. On our uh, Shercolor F-Series, this is not the same printer print head that we have in our other printers. This is purpose-built just for dye sublimation um, in that the, it, the print head will not react with the inks. It won't cause clogging or uh, what do you call it, degradation of, of print quality over time. It's built to last for the life of the printer as long as you have it. That print head will keep working and it is fully covered under the warranty of the printer as well. Uh, big thing that we take very serious at Epson is all our uh, the inks that we use. Um, the inks are 100% OECOTEX certified, which means that these are safe for the, uh, for the U.S. market. It's all the consumer protection, our CPSIA, they're all certified for that, so they're safe. There's no harmful uh, irritants or anything to be concerned as an operator, but also that the product that you're selling, if people put their lips on top of a mug, you want to make sure that ink is going to be safe and our inks have that full safety where it has direct skin contact or direct body contact with the human is no concern at all with this ink set. So safety is definitely a very important part. And the inks have a wide color range to give you a ton of different detail, really bright yellows and, and rich blacks um, all along the way with that system. As you start using these printers, uh, a big thing we like to do is um, as you use the printer, the more you use it, um, one of our ways to kind of reward you for that is we do have a thing called an Epson Rewards Program. You get points for all the ink and paper uh, that you use, um, and you can exchange those points for either a discounted or free service warranty extension. So you can have this printer completely uh, under uh, warranty for three years at no cost if you're printing on average about six rolls of paper a month. For less than that, not everybody does that much print less than that, it can still get you a 50% or 75% discount on uh, future warranties. Lastly, just on a little bit about the Epson solution, what we really try to do is a little bit of how that whole system works, uh, what goes on behind the scenes, which we focus on that. We have our own chemical engineers who build the ink. We are of our printhead design engineering system uh, team that manage and to work together with our ink team to build a match print head and a print body that's there. We tie that in with the software, the color management, um, papers that are extremely efficient for printing onto uh, fabrics as well as onto hard goods, uh, our transfer media. And that's fully supported with lifetime technical support. Uh, on the phone, you can, if you ever have a question about it, you can call us, uh, as well as also on-site. Uh, so the printer, including installation, gets going, but also making sure that if you have any issues with the printer where it actually does need to have uh, a hardware technician come out, uh, we will include that. That's covered under our service warranty one year out of the box, but that can be extended for up to three years. The big thing we like to do with this is it's really that one key, the turnkey solution, so you don't have to hunt down a whole bunch of different vendors. Um, you know if you buy this product, um, you know you're going to have a good success. If there's something goes wrong, it's one number to call. We'll solve that issue. So with that, I'm going to turn this back over to Darcy. Uh, sorry, I'm going to jump one slide ahead for you. I'm sorry. Uh, but I'll turn it back over to keep talking about th this is just the printing part. 
But next, after printing, you got to do the finishing. So how do you do that heat transfer and take it away? Okay. Thank you, Tim. Um, so we have a couple of different ways to do um, the heat pressing portion of this production. Uh, on here is we're showing a single mug press. Uh, this is where you, once you have your printout, uh, you do take the, the printout and you actually have to tape it to the mug to keep it from shifting and moving. In this scenario, you would actually slide the mug into this mug press and clamp it shut. That's where you get your, your pressure. Next two items you need is temperature and time, and this gives you that capability as, as all of these processes will. Uh, the nice thing about this particular one is that it does include different heating elements. So it allows you to do 11 ounce, 15 ounce, steins, large and small latte mugs and water bottles. Uh, it is making one at a time. So again, maybe prototyping or, or if you're doing a job, you get a job where it's like, you know, six to maybe, you know, 12 mugs, that would be fine. You are going to be doing about eight to 10 mugs per hour with something like this. So some people will buy one and then two and three and keep growing. Uh, that's one way to do it, but we do have some other ways that you can go about it where you'd be increasing your production more efficiently. Oh, Geo Knight, uh, that is a USA, a US company. So it's got, um, it's, they're built here in the US. Uh, this one does allow you to do a full wrap around which this means is the way that it clamps around, the clamp actually goes from handle to handle. So you're gonna get your image closer to the actual handle. Uh, it does allow you to do it all the way from the top to the bottom printing. So if you're, if you're doing, if you have your design on it and you're not getting enough heat on the top and the bottom of the mug, your image will look faded. So you definitely need to make sure you have a way of doing um, the mugs all the way from the top to the bottom with the heat. I'm going to hand the presentation over now to Dan Gilstrap. Dan is with Hicks and he's going to discuss a little bit about these wraps and some other ways for produ um, producing mugs on a more higher scale. So Dan, do we got you here? Yes, ma'am. Thanks, Darcy. Yeah, Thank definitely. You for, thanks for joining us today. I'm going to talk very quickly about our, uh, our sublimation wraps. You can see through the picture that the clasp is a heavy duty metal. It's basically a lifetime clasp. When the silicone will wear out, you can buy replacement silicone for that clasp. So essentially, uh, you're buying a wrap that's going to last for a very long time. What we build one wrap for both the 11 and 15 ounce mug wraps which comes in handy. You don't have to buy multiple wraps that way. So one wrap, the 11 and 15s. And then as you see through the picture, we have the capabilities to do everything from a shot glass uh, up to a travel mug. We have, we have built wraps for substrates varying in size from a one ounce shot glass all the way up to a 60 ounce travel container. So you do have, uh, you have a lot of flexibility with our wraps. Uh, we can we can build custom wraps, or you can buy our standard stock wraps, or they're available. Uh, mug wraps going to be able to get about 100 cycles. You'll be able to do approximately 100 mugs through the silicone before you need to replace it. And uh, you can buy the replacement silicone pre-cut. We ship it to you. It's about a two-minute install to replace the silicone. Next slide. All right, as you see, you know, uh, the production cycle here, they print the, uh, they print the transfer, they'll take it over, they'll go approximately one quarter, one half inch from the handles, they'll use heat tape to secure the transfer to the mug. Once the transfer is secured to the mug, then you will wrap the silicone around the mug with, we have an overhandle design where the, the mug class, uh, clasp over the handle, which give very tight, very secure fit. You'll also see a quarter inch more on the top and a quarter inch overlay on the bottom 
which were giving you plenty of space to do a complete uh, a complete bleed top to top to bottom, handle to handle. You can do a complete bleed with our mug wraps. Next one. Next side. Okay. The uh, this is our countertop sublimation oven. We call it Subla Pro. The Subla Pro was designed with with the uh, with production in mind. Once you've outgrown your mug presses, or you've got to a point where you have to increase your production, this countertop is a perfect way to go. This thing is rated at 50 mugs plus an hour. So essentially you're going to be able to load 12 to 15 mugs per cycle and a typical cycle is going to last 10 and a half to 12 minutes so in an ideal situation you're going to be able to run four to five cycles through this oven in one hour's time what what is so great about this oven you see the oven racks inside the inside the glass front the oven racks are adjustable which means you can adjust the racks to accommodate a shot glass or you can adjust the wraps to uh, accommodate a 28-ounce travel mug. You have a great deal of flexibility in there. And this thing is a very, very, uh, uh, very efficient for the footprint. You're getting a lot of production out of a three-foot square, essentially. This mug oven is a very good entry-level, mid-production oven that's well worth the money. Next slide. Okay, once you go from the countertop, you get, in, you get really serious about uh, mug production. We offer three models. That first model, shown at the bottom left, is a 2414. What, what that is telling you is that belt is 24 inches wide and it's 14 feet in length. As you can see, you've got the oven body, and then you have a brake, and then on the end you have a cooler. So what's so great about this oven after it runs through, after it sublimates at 400 degrees through the oven, it exits through a cooler, then it's cool to touch, it's, it's room temperature at this time. You literally take the wrap off, take the artwork off, put it in a box, and send it out the door. It's very, very effective with this cooler. The 2414 is rated, you know, these numbers that we use are pretty conservative. We'd rather uh, under-promise and... Uh, and overperform. The, uh, the 2414 is rated at 150 mugs per hour. The next step up is a 3626. Same, same logic, a 36 inch wide belt, 26 feet in length. Net oven, you know, on average, would do between six and 700 mugs per hour. Once again, very, very high production. Uh, I think we're showing in the spec sheet at 500 an hour. And that's very, very conservative. You, you can actually increase on that number. Our largest, our, uh, our biggest mug oven is a 4827. It's got a 48 inch belt, 27 feet in length. And this bad boy will do over 1,000 mugs an hour. It's being used in some of the larger fulfillment houses in the United States. Uh, all these customers at one time have started a small oven of some kind, maybe even a small mug press. But as their business grows, their needs for production grows, and we, we, offer, uh, we offer several, uh, several pieces of equipment you know, to, to grow as your, um, your production grows. These mug, these mug ovens have a 9-inch opening. So anything up to 8.5 inches th uh, tall, you can send through this mug oven. Lattes, uh, travel mugs, beer steins, pint glasses, all of those items go through this mug, go through this mug oven, typically cook time. So another colleague of ours that we haven't mentioned, her name is Meredith. She has been very diligent answering a lot of questions uh, offline here. Uh, so I do want to make a shout out to, to Meredith. Thank you, Meredith, for helping us out today and answering all these questions. Um, but if anyone does have any questions that haven't been answered, I'm going to open it up. Um, I'm going to bring Dan and, and Tim back online. And we would love to answer any questions that you guys might have that we haven't addressed already.
Let's see here. Meredith's done such a great job. She's been answering quite a bit of your guys' questions here. Um, Uh, one question is, can the Hicks wraps be used in the 3D vacuum press? No. <laughs> no. No, that's, that's a great question. I've never been asked that before, but uh, I, I'm not exactly sure how that would work. That I've never tried it. I'm not saying it won't work, but it would just have to be tested and tried. You ever tried it? Okay. Why would you even need it? What What is the resale value of a sublimated mug or drinkware? Uh, that's a good question. That's It kind of depends. Are you selling business to business or are you selling straight to the consumer? Uh, we see mug prices being sold around, you know, an average of $15 up to, you know, up in the 20s on, at retail. But if you're selling it, if you're the one in production selling it to the store that's going to then be, re, you know, selling it, then obviously you're going to have to bring that price down so that in, the in-person can, can sell it. But, you know, I always tell people, you know, go out on, on Etsy, go out on eBay, um, just check. Uh, Amazon is a big place as far as checking out pricing on items. But for the most part, you see mugs being sold between, you know, I'd say nine nine fifty is very low, uh, all the way up to uh, fifteen is about the average. Um, nine to to twenty. It, it really depends what you're putting on the mug, and, and the market that you're in. Let's see. Uh, some people are just saying, "How do I order? Uh, do I have to go online?" Uh, if you're ordering some of the equipment we've talked about, I'd say call in to Coastal. Again, that number is 800-562-7760. Uh, we do have a special um, offer that I will be emailing this out to everybody, but we do have a special code where you're going to get 15% off your drinkware. Uh, the code is here's to you. Uh, it's the number two in there and then the letter U. So it's here's the number two and the letter U. Kind of wanted to toast you guys and say here's to you for joining us on our webinar. We'll be sending that out also in an email. Uh, that 15% off drinkware will be good from today until end of the day on Friday. Okay. Um, we're going to wrap this up. We've got your questions. If we didn't answer them here, we're definitely will respond to you in an email and answer your questions again. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us today, especially Tim and Dan for joining us. Uh, they're definitely the experts when it comes to, to the printing and, and the mug oven. So if there's any questions, uh, we can reach out and help have Dan and, and Tim also answer them for us. And Thank you all for joining us. We, we definitely appreciate it. And following the webinar, we do have a quick survey that we're going to send out to you. We really enjoy doing these webinars. We hope, obviously, you're enjoying them as well. And we'd like to hear back from you guys on what other webinars you would like for uh, the Coastal Pro team to offer you. So thanks, everybody.